Okay, we're gonna get started here. Welcome to the first Orchard live stream. Uh, today we're gonna be making a VR viewer. Uh, it's to the Google Cardboard version two spec. Uh, but before we get started, uh, I was just gonna give an overview of the uh, interface a little bit. Um, as you can see here, this is the browse page. Okay, uh, we're gonna get started here. Welcome to the first. This is the browse page. Um, you can browse through objects and see things that people have created on the site. Um, in the bottom right hand corner on all the pages we have our help slash chat menu. Um, we're always sitting here working, writing code, so if you have any questions we're usually here to immediately answer them and if not we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, during the video you can post questions in the YouTube um, chat and we can answer them at the end or if you've got something uh, that you would like to individually ask you can Dan and Eric will be standing by to answer those uh, my name is Patrick by the way and the top right hand corner um, we have a our menu settings this is where you can log in log out do all of that uh, we recently added a uh, light dark theme uh, we're still working on some of that styling but it's kind of nice uh, for modeling at night Uh, we also have our help menu in the top right corner. Uh, this overlays over everything, so um, when you're modeling or doing anything else, you can watch videos. Uh, you can also search the help for those videos. Uh, to search items on the site, uh, we have our built-in search, um, and you can also sort items as well. Uh, this is a good way to, uh, creation time, can check the latest objects on the site. Uh, in the top left corner here, we have our profile page. Um, this is my profile. It's got a little info about me and some of the designs that I put on the site. I think since the last time uh, we talked uh, with you guys, uh, we've added uh, personal um, subscriptions. These start at $7 a month or $70 a year, and this allows you to design objects in private. We also have added um, a referral program, so if you can uh, get some people to sign up, Get your once you make a model on the site, you'll get a referral link, um, and for every five people uh, that sign up uh, after clicking your referral link, um, you'll get a free month of uh, private modeling. Okay, if we go back to the browse page, in the bottom left-hand corner is the create new design. I'm going to go ahead and click that, and this drops us into the CAD interface. Uh, we have a few more options in the CAD interface. Um, as you can see, uh, controls are left click to rotate, right click to pan, and uh, mouse wheel scroll to scroll in and out. And this does scroll in and out on the mouse cursor, so just point it where you want to zoom in or zoom out on. Um, as before, we have our help and our uh, menu. The menu is different in the CAD interface. Um, since the last time we talked, we have added uh, global units. So today we're going to be designing in millimeters, so I'm going to go ahead and set that. Uh, this uh, display digits is for our uh, measurement output uh, that you'll see later. Uh, for right now, we'll just leave that at two, uh, two digits. That'll be fine. Um, you can also uh, hide and show some faces, edges, things like that. Uh, we also have the help as well. Uh, the tree icon is actually the save. Uh, right now it's giving us the prompt, try making something before saving, because we haven't actually added anything to the scene. Uh, but this is where you save parts and uh, scenes. In the bottom left hand corner we have the ability to uh, add some primitive shapes, you know, some cones and s spheres and cylinders and such. Uh, we also have the ability to add uh, backgrounds, uh, so if you want to uh, model in a nice serene place uh, you can just uh, add those to the scene. Here's a nice one of uh, Alaska. I took this on my last vacation, it was pretty cool. Um, we also have the list sketches option. You'll see later we'll be using this as we add more sketches to the scene. This allows us to toggle sketches on and off. And we can also add parts from the design database to the scene. So if you have a part commit uh, string, you can just paste that in here, or you can use Control C, Control V to copy and paste parts into a scene. On the bottom right hand, we still have the same chat window. You can open that up, ask us questions anytime. We're always here to help. 
In the bottom right hand corner we also have a set material. This allows us to add our material color and texture settings to the objects. And we also have camera controls. Uh, one of the other new things that we've added recently was uh, locking camera rotation during sketching. Uh, that prevents the view from rotating around. Uh, we, if you see this little lock right here, that allows you to uh, toggle that on and off at any time, even while you're sketching. Uh, we have some other camera options here, fit to view. Um, this switches between uh, perspective and orthographic camera. We'll use that a lot during sketching. It's very hel helpful to have an orthographic perspective uh, while sketching. Uh, one of the other new features that we've added is uh, section planes. Uh, this is the clear section plane uh, button, and uh, I'll use that uh, today uh, just to show it off. Okay, uh, let's see what else we've got here. Um, one of the some other features that we're not going to be using today is mirror feature. We did add that within the last uh, few weeks. And we've also added a forum. Uh, we can go on, uh, show off your designs, um, talk about the site and with other people. And I think that pretty much covers all of the new stuff. I think we're going to go ahead and get started. So to start a design, anytime you're modeling, you kind of want to think about uh, lines of symmetry. It's very helpful to model your object about these lines of symmetry. So today with cardboard viewer, it's bilaterally symmetric because uh, we have the, the eyes on each side. And I'm actually going to align the eyes with the uh, origin uh, vertically as well. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to click on the X, uh, the YZ plane here. Uh, these are the or orthogonal planes and you can use any of these to start a new sketch. So we'll go ahead and start on the YZ plane, hit the sketch button. Um, as you can see right now, we're still in a perspective camera, and just to square everything up, I'm going to go ahead and switch that over to the orthographic camera. So we're just going to go ahead and start sketching. To start sketching, all you have to do here is uh, click on the draw line in this case. Uh, click on the screen, and this is a polyline, so it continues to draw. As every time you click, it draws another line. Uh, once you close a profile, in this case, I clicked on the point that I started. This closed a loop, and closed loops are necessary to create solid uh, geometry from. So uh, as you can see, the visualization changed, and the line's now a light blue color. This just tells us that we have a closed loop. I'm going to go ahead and add a little construction uh, geometry here, another line from the origin. And as you can see, once I added that line, the light, the light blue visualization went away. It's showing that we no longer have a closed loop. Um, I'm going to exit uh, draw line mode. Um, as you can see here, I'm exiting line mode. I'm pressing the escape button as one option. Um, or you can go down here and select select mode. So I'm going to use this, uh, once I turn this into a construction line, um, we'll get our profile view. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and add a constraint here uh, to this bottom line. This is a midpoint on line constraint. And then I'm also going to vertically constrain this line and then uh, make a construction. And when I made a construction, as you can see, it turned light blue again. We're back to having a closed loop profile. Um, so our constraints are available based on what you select. So if I select a line, I get a few options, horizontal, vertical, construction, also the length, the ability to set a length on it. Um, if I control, hold control and select another item, uh, that allows me to select multiple entities and I get constraints that are relevant to that selection. So in this case, with two lines, I can add a parallel constraint, a perpendicular constraint, um, collinear, etc. Right now, I'm just going to add a horizontal constraint to both of these lines to square them up. And I'm going to do the same thing for the uh, vertical lines uh, on each side. Uh, using this uh, midpoint on line uh, construction line just reduces one dimension that I wouldn't have to add, uh, picking one of these sides and, and dimensioning it from the center. Uh, it's also really helpful uh, doing the same thing for squaring up, centering objects as well. Uh, if I wanted to, I could add another one right here, and this would uh, snap the box to the center, uh, centered on this origin. But uh, I'm going to be doing this off-center, so I don't need that. Uh, I've already taken some dimensions off of this, so I've, I've got them uh, ready to go. So uh, we're just going to start with uh, 144 millimeter width on this. Uh, you can just press Enter uh, when you uh, type that. Uh, and it will automatically check the checkbox, or you can click the checkbox and uh, 
that will add the constraint. Uh, we've, al we've also added complex um, input to our dimension field. So um, in the next case here, I'll just do a random complex uh, entry. So this needs to be 86 millimeters. So we could do something like 100 minus 14 and do that. And that's going to give us our 86 millimeters. Um, it also uh, accepts heterogeneous um, dimensions. So we could do something like um, 8.6 centimeters and then apply the constraint as well. And that's going to give us the same dimension. It converts between units and you can do fractions and uh, exponents, anything you really want, any kind of mathematical expression. Okay, so uh, now we've got that uh, constraint there. Uh, the dimension from the bottom uh, to the center of the lenses is going to be 37 millimeters. I'm gonna go ahead and add that. Okay, and now we have our uh, profile dimensioned and constrained. To close that, click the green check mark, and now our rotate controls are back as well. I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to perspective mode. It's just better when looking at uh, the 3D geometry. So to create a solid geometry from a profile, all we have to do is click on it. Uh, in this case, the option that we get is extrude because we've only selected uh, the profile. Uh, for instance, if I wanted to revolve this item, I could select the profile and a construction line that would be the axis for it. Uh, and that gives me the revolve option. I'm gonna go ahead and extrude this 30 millimeters. And uh, just to preface this a little bit, all these, this process for making this model, there's no one right way to make a model. Uh, there are some resilient ways to make models, and uh, tonight I'm going to use just a few different features just to kind of show off some of the features and show you how to use them. Um, so now I'm going to do a shell um, just to show that feature off. Uh, the shell basically uh, deletes a face and uh, thickens everything around it. We're going to be using a general uh, two millimeter wall thickness um, just about everywhere on this model. So I click the shell button and uh, set that to two millimeters. And uh, now we can go ahead and take this and I'm just going to click on this face, click the extrude and click on the red arrow to pull it down. Uh, you can pull up or down with either arrow. And if you look at when I select the arrow, the uh, toggle switches. Um, so I'm going to pull it down. That sets it to a cut. So what we're really doing is cutting this face and cutting it through the object. So you can just do that. Just like this. Okay, so this is the, the, the back face of the, of the viewer. Um, let's go ahead and extrude this front face out a little bit here. Um, in this case, I'm going to extrude it 57.5 millimeters. And I'm going, I want to fuse that. This dimension is based on my phone thickness that I already took um, before, before we started and how I, how I laid this out. Okay. So uh, the next step here, we're going to do start a new sketch on this top plane. So I can click on this top plane, uh, click the sketch, and just start adding uh, some geometry as before. And as you can see, everything's uh, not quite straight uh, just when we're adding the geometry, but that's okay because we're going to go back in and straighten everything out with constraints. Okay, so I've selected all the vertical lines. I'm going to add the vertical constraint. Okay, that's all the horizontal uh, constraints. I'm not sure if this is a, a new feature for you guys or not, but uh, we have added this recently. This is uh, project geometry. So since I want to orient part, some of this geometry with respect to the face that I'm sketching on, I can just click on any vertex, vertex uh, right now uh, we, and uh, click the project on sketch. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna take that vertex and, and project it directly onto the sketch plane. It doesn't have to be on the plane that I'm sketching on. Um, if we rotated this, I could click a vertex on the back and project that onto the sketch as well. And uh, let's see, might need this one too, so I'm going to drop that in. Um, so we're going to go ahead and take this. Uh, 
this is two millimeters off of that front wall so I can just do that same midpoint constraint on this line and then I'm gonna go up here and add a vertical two millimeter constraint oh actually no I'm going to uh, add a horizontal constraint and then we get our uniform two millimeter wall thickness uh, something we can do here is to add just a few equal constraints so we don't have to dimension everything Let's set those two lines equal. Let's set those equal as well. And these are just going to hang off the screen here. I'm just using this to cut so it doesn't really need to be aligned at all. Okay, so uh, let's see. One of the, This is a critical dimension right here. This is the what will be the front face of the phone. And this is the uh, front face of the viewer. So I'm going to add a distance constraint right here. So I'm going to click on this point. And there's a few different ways I could do this, right? So we have a, a we can do a point line distance. And what this really does, this is a distance, normal distance between the point and the line. Or we can click on this point and this line and give it a horizontal dimension. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add that horizontal dimension. Uh, this one is critical for the uh, lenses uh, so that everything's in focus properly. It's 50 millimeters. And as you can see, that adjusted uh, everything over. And I can also go ahead and add a vertical constraint right here just so that everything is kind of li lines up those two features. Um, we want this to be two millimeter wall thickness as well. Let me add that. And then my phone thickness right here is 7.5 millimeters. Oh, also this distance sticking out from the edge of the screen is going to be seven millimeters. This is just to give the phone a little bit of support uh, when it's uh, resting in the case. And as you can see here, I set that equal constraint before down here. So when I added, when I made this seven millimeters, that made this seven millimeters, and uh, same for the uh, thickness across here as well. And like I said before, it doesn't matter that this is hanging off. We're just going to use this to cut out this volume. I think that is everything. Uh, actually, I need to add this. So right now, we don't have a, any kind of visual constraint indicator. So you do kind of have to keep track of them a little bit. Uh, easiest way to do that is to just really do point-to-point -point constraints, uh, mostly, if you're, if you're adding dimensions. And then you don't really have to trace them down. You can kind of just check the points that you're constraining. Um, and that's going to be everything for that. So let's go ahead and close that. And now I can rotate the camera again. And um, so now we're going to take this profile that we made and we're going to extrude it into the part. And right now I'm extruding a profile so I, I don't get the cut fuse options like I had before. What, what we're doing here is creating a solid geometry from this profile. The overall height of this was 86 millimeters. So to get my two millimeters on the bottom, I'm going to make it 80, uh, negative 84 millimeter extrusion. So as you can see, that added some solid material here. Uh, it's a little easier to select these when they're not coplanar. So I'm just going to take that surface and just pull it up like that. So the next thing we're going to do is make a Boolean cut. To select shapes, you have to double click an object. So if I double click my, my base shape, that gives me some new options that we haven't seen. Uh, this translate, rotate, duplicate, delete. Uh, delete, you can also use the delete key to delete an object. Um, if I hold control and double click uh, the top piece here, uh, that gives us some, some other options as well. Um, now we have fuse, cut, common, or uh, the uh, intersection. So uh, we've tried to make this a little bit of an indicator here. In the icon you can see a solid sh shape and then a hollow shape. So when we click cut that that's basically telling us that the first shape that we select is the shape that we want to keep solid and the second shape is the tool that we want to cut from the part. This keep tool op option is for like kind of like a cookie cutter. Uh, you could you could use this shape 
you could cut it from the bottom, uh, use this tool to cut from the bottom shape, and then you could move it and make the same cut again. This is useful for doing pattern features if you need to make a bunch of cuts that are the same and just uh, move your tool around. Uh, but for this, we're only making one cut, so I'm just going to leave that turned off, and uh, we're going to make the cut. As you can see, that cut the extruded geometry from our base shape. Okay, so uh, the next step here is um, doing all of the uh, lens geometry. I'm going to rotate the camera back around, click on the front face, and uh, click the sketch, a new sketch. Uh, let's go ahead and switch that over to an orthographic view. As you can see within the orthographic view, you're, you're looking uh, at the scene. Uh, straight on without any kind of uh, angular deviation so it's just much better for sketching so because I aligned this earlier with the lenses my uh, it's gonna be very easy to add um, the lens geometry because it's just aligned with the origin I, I don't really have to do add any dimensions there um, I really don't actually need to do um, both of these today So I'm, I'm just going to delete that. We'll, we'll put everything on one side and make our solids and translate them. So there's a few different things that we're going to need to make. We're going to need to make a boss uh, on the back side to hold the lens, uh, a cutout for that, and then the through hole as well to keep the lens from uh, falling f through on the front. So that's why I've drawn the three circles. Uh, we'll put a horizontal constraint here. Um, the width between the lenses is 64 millimeters, and that's the center to center width. So for our horizontal distance here, we can just do 64 divided by 2 and press enter. And that's going to set that at uh, 32, uh, 32 millimeters uh, from the center. And just to show you, double check, I can click it again, and now it's showing 32 millimeters. So the through hole diameter for our um, lenses is going to be 34 millimeters so we can do the same thing 34 divided by 2 because this is a radius that we're setting right here and then let me pull this out just a little bit there we go uh, now this diameter is going to be the pocket for the lens on the back side and our lenses are 37 millimeters in diameter. I'm going to give them a uh, 0.3 millimeter clearance uh, just so that everything fits. Um, so that would be a 0.6 total uh, clearance, uh, 0.3 per side. So what we can do here is uh, I could do a parentheses 37 plus 0.6 close parentheses divided by two and that's going to set that diameter for us. And then on the outside here, our outer radius is going to be somewhere. We, this is just support for the outside of the lenses, roughly uh, two millimeters again. And uh, I'll just go ahead and set that to like a 21 millimeters radius. OK, those are all the sketches that we're going to need to uh, add the eye, uh, the eye, eye geometry. So let's uh, go ahead and close that. And we can click on any of these. I'm going to go ahead and add this one. Um, this will be, we're going to need 3.5 millimeters to support the lens. So this is going to be negative 3.5. Uh, that actually needs to be sticking out from the uh, surface. So let's go ahead and translate the two, that, the two millimeters. Uh, so that's going to be negative two. Oops. We don't want to extrude it, we want to translate it. So I double click that shape again. That's the double click shapes to, to get the translate and rotate feature. And we're going to do negative two in the x direction. And I can just hit enter. And that, that, that moved it over. So here's an example of where we're going to use that uh, keep tool feature uh, for the booleans. Go ahead and switch that back to perspective. So I'm going to double click my shape double click this uh, boss geometry and well, I want to fuse these together and I'm going to keep the tool this time so that added that 
shape to it. I'm going to double click my shape again and this time I'm going to translate it over the 64 enter uh, pupil distance and now I can add that over here as well and I can turn off keep tool now okay so that's the boss to support it um, as you can see the sketches went away because we created some geometry from them so I'm gonna go down here to the bottom left hand corner gonna click on the list sketches button and I have a few sketches here. These are the sketches that I've used so far. Uh, they're toggleable to, for visibility, so you can see that was the first sketch that I used. Here's the second sketch, that's the top sketch, and uh, here's the third sketch with all the, the lens geometry. Um, so the next thing that we're going to need to do is uh, create our lens pocket. I'm going to extrude that, uh, the negative 3.5 actually it doesn't really matter how uh, how far this is because we're just gonna make a cut with it so I can just grab that and pull it and I'm also going to translate this uh, the negative two millimeters because we do need a little bit of material on the front to uh, keep the lenses in and if you're not quite following uh, it'll make a lot of sense in just a second so we're going to take the, our shape hold control double click our tool and now we're going to do a cut. So I click cut and I'm going to select keep tool. So that just made the cut. And now we're going to translate this over and repeat the same thing that we just did, 64. And I can turn keep tool off this time. OK, so there are the pockets for the lenses. And now we just need the through holes. So I'll go down here again. Select our lens. And I just pulled that through both sides because uh, it helps with cuts if it's not coplanar with the surface you're cutting and it's easier to select the item when it's not having to interfere with the surface of, of the other shape that you're selecting as well. So let's double click our shape, double click our tool, and we're going to perform a cut. I'm going to keep this one more time. And that was 64 millimeters. Oops. And turn keep tool off. Okay, so now we have the eye holes uh, cut for the lenses. We have a little bit of a, of a boss to support the lenses and the pocket for them with clearance. Uh, we're going to put the lenses in the description, a link to them on Amazon. They're 34, 37 millimeter lenses made by Bliss Time. Uh, there may be some other vendors out there. Um, and the settings for the viewer will just be the standard Google Cardboard V2 specs. Uh, that's important when you set up the viewer because, um, as you can see, these holes are off-center uh, from the, uh, from the uh, viewer. So the, the view gets offset depending on your screen size of your phone so that it can accommodate uh, a bunch of different phone sizes. Okay, uh, just to make this print a little easier, we're going to add some support material here. Um, we extruded this out 3.5 millimeters, so I'm gonna just going to add a chamfer. Uh, what that's going to do is... Um, actually, here's an, here's an opportunity to show section view. Uh, section view is uh, when you select a face, you can create a section from it. So uh, in this case, the direction is always outward. So if I cut this right now, all I would see would be this, this back face. So I'm going to go ahead and flip that direction. And that cuts it off in the other direction. And this cuts everything off. But what it allows us to do is see uh, inside uh, our objects, see geometry that was previously uh, hidden. So if we look right here, you can see that this wouldn't print very well. It would need some support material. So we're going to add some uh, support geometry. This was 3.5 millimeter extrusion out from the surface. If we were to make this 3.5 millimeters, it would cause a failure on this uh, chamfer uh, operation uh, because it would completely consume the face that the chamfer was being created on. So we can just go ahead and set that to 3.4. That's just going to leave 0.1 millimeters. It's, it would be negligible. So you can see if we zoom in really close, there's just a little tiny 0.1 millimeter right there. 
But now we have our 45 degree uh, overhang, so we shouldn't need any support material there. Okay, and now to turn off our section view, uh, we can come down here and hit the clear section plane button. And that returns the view uh, back to how it was. Let's see, what do we want to do next? Let's, uh, we can go ahead and start uh, adding the top. So to do that, I'm going to come down here. Kind of zoom in, try and select this top plane. Um, what I just did there, uh, if you haven't seen that before, is um, this is a through select option. So if you click and hold the middle mouse button and scroll it, the whole model turns transparent and this allows you to scroll through some of the geometry to select items that are difficult or not on top of your view. So sometimes if you're having difficulty selecting something or if it's hidden behind an object, so like in this case I would like to select the, the plane, the bottom plane, I can click right here, hold the middle mouse button down and scroll with it held down and select uh, that plane even though I wasn't directly uh, hovering over it. So let's go ahead and select that top plane and we're going to create a sketch from it. Zoom out a little bit and uh, switch that back, th back over to orthogonal. So let's just go ahead and bring in some of this geometry. We'll use it to make our lid. I'm making this piece and this part in two pieces so that it's easily printable. It would be difficult to have support material uh, supporting the, the top piece of this and you wouldn't have an easy way to get it out either. So just making it in two pieces is going to, be, is going to make everything a lot easier. Um, we can, uh, for today, we're just going to have some simple um, flanges uh, holding everything in uh, with, a slight, uh, clear, with a slight fit, clearance fit. Um, but a after today, I'll probably spend some time on this model, really optimizing it, adding some snap features, um, adding the button uh, for input controls and, and things like that. So, and that's what's great about uh, Orchard. The models evolve and grow over time. So when we get done today, this model will be saved. Uh, if you want to make any edits uh, for your phones, go, go ahead and uh, get at it. And uh, I will be optimizing this for a Nexus 6P. And uh, I'll add all of the uh, other nice, nice features to it, like the snapping lid and whatnot. So let's go ahead and draw some lines. I'm just going to use this reference geometry. Because I, these points are fixed, I don't, I don't need to uh, add any constraints or dimensions here. I'm just drawing this square the same size as the top of the viewer. You can close that. Rotate it. And then I'm just going to go ahead and uh, extrude that. We, I want this, uh, this overlap right here to be uh, probably about 4 millimeters. So I'm going to extrude that down 4 millimeters, and then I'm going to extrude it up 2 millimeters also. So the next thing I'm going to do is take the top piece, it's now my shape, and I'm going to use the bottom piece as a tool to cut the top piece. So I double selected the top piece, control double selected the bottom piece second because it's a tool, and I'm going to keep the tool because I definitely don't want to lose my, my bottom shape. So we don't have the ability to hide or show objects yet. So to do the rest of this modeling, I'm just going to kind of slide the bottom uh, piece out of my way. Uh, it's, it's always a good idea to only do this with a, uh, a nice round number. Uh, otherwise, it makes it difficult getting it back. So 100 millimeters uh, or something like that. That just gets the shape out of the way. And now I can start working on it. And if we rotate the camera view, we can see what we just did, where we cut the shape from the uh, from the lid piece. We don't really need this, uh, these uh, pieces right here, so I'm just going to go ahead and click on them and just cut them off. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is, this is a lot of material to print, so we, we probably uh, don't want to print this uh, full thickness. Uh, so we can go in here and click Sketch. 
and I'm just going to do a little offset. We don't have a, a sketch offset or a face geometry offset yet, but uh, this should go pretty quick if we just uh, pull in these geometries. Oh, actually, you know what? Before I do this, uh, I'm, I need to add some clearance for this lid piece. Otherwise, it's not going to snap. It's not going to snap on. So, uh, we're just going to run like a half millimeter clearance on, on everything. So that's going to be negative 0.5. And all we really need to do is cut all of our connecting faces. And that uh, dimension input doesn't change uh, for the extrusion. So all you have to do is uh, once you've got it set. Let's just click on the faces and hit the check mark. So I'm just going to do that on all of my uh, connecting faces. It's always important to remember clearance uh, when you're building anything. Uh, line to line usually isn't going to cut it unless you're making things with some really high tolerance. Okay, now we can go back now that we've uh, added all our clearance in for the lid uh, to the base and click on the bottom. And I'm just going to cut out a little profile here uh, just to uh, reduce the material. Just sketch our profile. And like I said, we don't have an offset feature yet, uh, but it's definitely in the uh, issues list. So today we'll just have to add some dimensions here. So I'm going to do a two millimeter vertical offset and uh, that same two millimeter wall thickness uh, horizontal offset. And I'm going to go through this pretty quick, uh, but basically all I'm doing here is, uh, actually, I didn't need to do that. Uh, all, all I'm going to need here is one dimension per corner uh, because we can go in and add um, the horizontal and vertical constraints. And you saw me do this before, so you can go back in the video uh, later if, if you're still having some trouble with the... Uh, understanding how, how the constraining works. I'm just going to go through this pretty quick. It does take a while to uh, really understand constraints. Um, they, they can be difficult, especially with complex profiles. Uh, th with simple prismatic shapes like this, it's really not that big of a deal. Um, but uh, they can they can be pretty complicated, and uh, we don't have the visual indicators yet, uh, like I said before. But uh, that's also something that we're working on, so that you'll be able to see when when a constraint is applied to an to a, a sketch entity. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and close that and just kind of pull that pocket up. And uh, we extruded this down four millimeters, so we're gonna do four millimeters up. Uh, See, this is the difficulty with selecting uh, coplanar faces. So all I have to do here is just click on it and just pull it down a little bit. And that'll give me a little bit more to select. So I selected the top plane first, then I selected the bottom plane, and I'm going to cut the bottom plane from it. And I don't need to make this cut more than once. So, so there we go. Now we have our pocket in the top. And we just need to do uh, one more simple pocket in this uh, rear piece. And like I said before, there's a lot of different ways uh, to uh, make any model. Uh, this is just one way, and I'm sure this model will change quite a bit over time. 
uh, as it's optimized, which is the whole intention of Orchard. And I'm just going to leave a little bit of that uh, hanging off because we don't need any material there. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and do that four millimeters again. We select our top piece, select our cut piece. Okay, so there's our lid. Uh, this should give us a pretty good fit, the half millimeter clearance per side and uh, four millimeter depth. If we need to adjust that depth, you know, we can just click on this face and pull it down uh, if that's not quite enough. I'm going to go ahead and slide our base back. Uh, I did notice that this isn't really supported. Uh, this front piece isn't supported right now. That's something I'll, I'll work on later uh, as far as having some kind of snap closing closure feature uh, to this. But this is just going to be the rough shape for now. Uh, we also need uh, clearance for our forehead. Uh, so let's go ahead back up here. And um, we're going to add a, an arc. And we can just bring in a little geometry. And I'm just going to make this vertical with this arc endpoint. And I'll do the same thing down here. And um, now we just need to center that. And let's see, what is this, 92 millimeters? Uh, that seems fine. Let's go ahead and set that to 92. And if we wanted to line this cut up, we can go ahead and do that. We actually need to make this a little bit further, or a little bit less. Uh, let's do 91.8. There we go, so it's sticking a little proud of the, oops. I don't have a closed loop. And as you can see, I can show you that pop-up again. This pop-up just lets you know that you have to have a closed loop in your sketch. I don't have a closed loop because the only geometry I have in here is this arc. Uh, so let's go ahead and close that. It doesn't matter how it's closed, right? So we can do anything. Now it's a closed loop. And now we're going to just pull that on through. Get that a little off the surface and then make a cut. Okay, uh, there we go. Actually, you know what? That was uh, too far. I should have been uh, two millimeters off that surface. That doesn't look very good. So let's go ahead and in the top right corner we have the undo button. And that'll undo that operation. Uh, undo the solid creation and just real quickly we'll change this, edit this sketch. So really, instead of uh, 92, we, read, we need to be uh, 94 millimeters off that surface. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat, pull that through, do the same thing. OK, here we go. Uh, this is a pretty thin feature right here. Uh, that'll probably give some you know, wouldn't be that great for printing, so we can just go ahead and put a little uh, radius on this. Um, just let me just do a half a half a millimeter. Okay, that cleans that up a little bit. Now we have our forehead clearance, and uh, oh yeah, we gotta have a we need some place to put our nose. So let's go ahead and add that. And I'm kind of just going to eyeball this uh, nose cut. Uh, just to show you uh, one more time how the project geometry works, um, I'm going to go ahead and cl click this vertex. It's not on the plane. The plane's on this surface. And hit project geometry. And as you can see, it does a normal projection of that point onto the surface. So now I can use that. And let's um, 
add some constraints here. I need to make sure that this is centered. Um, so I'm going to click this point. Do that same little midpoint online uh, trick. And make this a construction geometry and make it vertical. And now we just kind of need to line up all of this. Uh, if I click on this control click this arc and align, I get the tangent operation. So we're going to go ahead and make that tangent. Okay, and uh, that looks uh, about right. Uh, I think that should be good. So let's go ahead and close that profile. Um, so now we're going to do a revolve. I have my profile, but I need something to revolve it about. So in this case, I can just click this edge right here and use that. And now my operation, my available action changed. I get the revolve action. Um, right now, there's no visual indicators on which way the revolve direction is uh, set. Uh, that's something that we'll get out here pretty soon. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and just try. I, I'm pretty sure this was a, a negative uh, direction. I could just do 362. That would really, wouldn't matter, but that looks like it. That revolves it in that direction. So I'm going to double click my shape, double click my cut tool, and uh, cut the nose hole out. Okay, so this is a very basic uh, cardboard viewer. Um, th definitely, is, there's definitely some work that we can do on it, and that, and we will be doing that. But uh, this should give you an idea for uh, how to, how to use some of the operations and um, what you can make with it. Um, also, I guess I can show off the uh, house time. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and look over uh, YouTube and go over those questions right now. And uh, if we have any more time, uh, we can go back and uh, look at materials uh, and some other stuff just to show that off. Okay. Okay, so the first question was, uh, what does a construction line mean? A construction line is a line that is used to create constraints with or to help you when you're constraining a sketch. It um, is not um, used to define any profiles, so you can have as many construction lines as, as in a sketch as you want. They're not going to affect whether or not you have a closed loop profile. They're just there to kind of help you when you are sketching. Um, the s other question, second question is, uh, how do I edit my existing sketch? So I'll go back into the interface and show that off one more time. So right now I, I don't have any sketches visible. Um, since we ha want to edit one of our existing sketches, we can go down here to the bottom left uh, menu, click on the list sketches button. Uh, that's going to, that's going to show off all of our sketches here. Um, I'm just going to turn on a few of these so you can see them. Um, this also highlights the sketch uh, when you hover over it uh, to see the sketch to show you which one uh, it is. Um, so in this case, let's say we want to edit this sketch. Uh, sometimes it can be a little difficult editing a sketch, especially if it's um, coincident or it's, it's hidden uh, by a, a shape. Uh, that's something that we're going to be working on as far as controls because it's kind of uh, can be a little difficult to select it through an object. Um, if you can e easily see the, the profile uh, highlighting, then um, all you need to do is double click the sketch. Double click is kind of like the higher level selection uh, for uh, an item. So uh, you can think about uh, for sketches, we have profiles, and their and their parents are sketches. You can have multiple profiles on a sketch. So if we select a profile, uh, that's that's something that we use to create some geometry from. But if we want to select the sketch, it's kind of like the parent because if we go back, if we double click this profile, we we're, what we're really doing is selecting the sketch, and we can hit sketch. That drops us back into this sketch, the same sketch that we were in. And just to show that. Um, the difference there. I'm going to add a few more profiles here. 
Um, all three of these profiles are now, and I'm going to hide those other sketches. Uh, all three of these profiles are now part of the same sketch, and I can use each one of them individually. I, I can um, create a geometry from this one, um, or, or any of them. It, it doesn't really matter. Um, go ahead and delete that, because we don't need that in our object. Um, but if I click on any one of these, and double click it, that selects the entire sketch of which all these profiles are part of. And the same selection principle applies to uh, shapes as well. Like this is, a, this is a vertex that's a single click, the edge is a single click, but if I want to select the parent of that, I can double click and now, now I'm getting the, like the parent shape of, of that lower level geometry. And uh, we're, we're going to be doing some, some work with uh, controls. We, we might be changing uh, how the controls work um, to, to make them a little easier to kind of pr pr proceed through that, those possible selection options. Okay, um, uh, as far as the, uh, I saw uh, I, some, one of the guys answered the undo redo. So the undo redo operations are only on our primary, um, our primary CAD operations at the moment, the 3D operations um, when, you're, when you're operating on shapes as well. Uh, that's something I should show. So let's go ahead and save this and uh, I'll show the difference between shapes and parts. Okay, so uh, this is the, our save, save menu. Um, so this is a new design. We're going to call this, uh, I'm going to call it cardboard because it is kind of built on the cardboard spec even though it's not cardboard. We'll call, it, call it cardboard V2. Um, and this is just a basic uh, cardboard V2 uh, object. And we have some options here, public, and now we have our new option, uh, private. Uh, this allows you to this will give you the prompt uh, as far as uh, if you don't have a private account, it'll, it'll tell you about our plan and, and how you can save objects privately. Um, but uh, as you see here, we have um, individual parts. Um, so what we're doing here is we're saving a whole design. So these parts will, be, will grow and evolve over time and we can track them each individually and we can add each of these individual parts into other designs. So depending on the part, you may want to add a name here, you may not. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just put a, let's put a simple name in here. This is the cardboard uh, base. And um, this is the cardboard uh, oops, lid. OK, so um, also, if you notice, uh, this is a problem that we have gotten some feedback on. Um, if you don't have a design name, the save button is not highlighted and you can't save a part. Uh, so let's go ahead and add a design name. Uh, on, on the same thing applies. What, this description that we're adding here is a description for this whole design, but we can also add descriptions for these subcomponents. Uh, so you, you could imagine, um, you know, if you have a really complex model, uh, naming each one of these pieces, you know, the various linkages or screws, bolts, components that, that make up your total assembly. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and save all of that. Uh, we get the saving scene prompt down here in the bottom corner. There we go. We get our successful save. Uh, you do want to wait until you get the successful save before you navigate um, away from the design uh, because uh, you'll lose your progress. So now we got our successful save. Um, we can hit the back button. And if we go down, we're going to click our search, open it up, uh, creation time. That's going to give us the latest created object. Here's our cardboard V2. If I click on it, uh, we only have one node on this because we just made our save. Oh, I forgot to show the single design view page. Um, this is where the design tree exists. Um, let me show one of those real quickly. Uh, here's a chessboard that I put on here today. It's not much, much of a design tree as, as much a, a design line because <laughs> these were all sequ sequential saves. Uh, but at any point on this design, uh, you can click on a node and uh, edit and branch the design from there by hitting the edit button. Um, 
Also in the second tab here, we have comments. Uh, so you can leave comments uh, about the design. And then if you look right here, here's our parts list. And this is why it's sometimes, you know, you want to name your parts. So this is the cardboard base. This is the cardboard lid. Just to show how this works, I'm going to go ahead and select one and uh, copy it. You can also tag items and buy or download the items, flag for content. You get the idea. So let's go down here, hit the edit button. That drops us back into the viewer. And these are parts. Uh, parts have the textures and materials of your item. You can click single click on a part and you can translate, rotate, you can duplicate the part or delete it from the scene. This is how we can keep everything light and fast. Uh, when you're working on a design, you don't necessarily need to be able to edit. You, you don't aren't necessarily editing every design. I mean, every individual part at the same time. Uh, so that, that's, that's why we do it this way. Uh, if I want to edit a part, all I do is click on it and click the edit button. And now you can see this part has edges uh, that are visible and, and this part doesn't. And that's one of the, the visual keys um, as, as far as uh, discerning between the two. Um, yeah, so now uh, I think we've got a few minutes to talk about textures. Also, uh, just a minute ago, if you saw um, when I was browsing the single design view, I hit the copy part button. Um, now I can, because I copied that part, I can either hit Control V, which is what I'm going to do right now, and that said successfully loaded parts. And you couldn't see the successfully load because it loaded it right on top of where it was, but I'm going to drag that out of the way. And uh, now you can see uh, what I just did was add this part to the scene. And I, I can add as many of these as I want. Um, let's click on translate. We'll get that one out of the way. So I'm going to add one now so you can see it. There it is. Boom. So although this is the same design that I was working on, this could be any part in Orchard that I can grab from another design, drop it in, and start using it in my assembly. Uh, so let's go ahead and add some textures. Um, so um, you can either, textures are applied on a part basis. Um, so you either need to double select, uh, double click your shape uh, that's editable or single click your part. In this case, I'm going to click them both and add a texture to both of them. So if I just go up here to the top right, uh, if I hit the uh, set material button, uh, that opens up our little uh, texture menu browser. I can click the edit button and now I can uh, change the materials of these objects. You can see how the, the materials are adjusting. Um, we can change opacity, uh, some of the options we have, wireframe. Uh, that could give you a wireframe view. Um, these, the metalness and uh, roughness features are, are just very helpful in, in uh, making a, uh, trying to get that exact look that you're looking for. So you can see how this, how this affects as the roughness goes down. It's starting to look really shiny and we turn the metalness down too. So now we get something that's kind of like a, like a plasticky look. Anyways, uh, you get the idea. Let's go over here to uh, textures. Uh, one of the things that's important when applying textures uh, we just click on a texture and that's going to apply it, is um, the texture is, is using that base color. It's, it's kind of shining through uh, with your texture. So if you want the texture to be exactly what it looks like in the image, you need, <coughs> you need to turn the uh, colors all, all the way to a, to a white or gray color um, to remove uh, the textures. You can remove a texture that goes back to the base color. Um, or you can uh, remove the custom material entirely. Um, that covers the textures. I think that's everything for today, guys. Uh, I think the, that'll be it. I hope this was helpful to everyone. Um, OK, uh, I'll show the uh, uh, drive-in speaker. So uh, this was a, a drive-in speaker that uh, Tanju started. Um, uh, here's the design tree. You can see how this design has evolved and changed over time. Um, and, uh, so uh, if we go ahead and edit this, uh, this is a pretty complex part. Um, we have some uh, grill features, uh, some uniform wall thickness features. Uh, uh, 
So definitely well on its way to becoming a uh, drive-in uh, movie speaker. Okay, I think that's everything for today, guys. Uh, we're signing off. Thanks a lot.